Hello, and thank you for the opportunity to talk to you today about the Biological Data st Standard Darwin Core. My name is Abby Benson. I'm a biologist with the U.S. Geological Survey, and I'm also the U.S. Node Manager for the Global Biodiversity Information Facility and the Ocean Biodiversity Information System. Let's say you're a parrotfish researcher and you're interested in understanding changes in the species over time and at broad spatial scales. You would probably need to go out and get data that would help you answer this question, um, data that's out there in repositories that's available for reuse. So when I went out and I did that, I went out to some repositories I know of and searched for this parrotfish species. And I was able to get access and download these data sets. And what we notice when we get these data sets and start looking at them is that while some of the information is the same and the column headers are the same, for instance, date here is the same for the top four, but th that some of the information is not. And these top four all came from the same project, so it's not surprising that they are following the same methodology here. But this bottom one, you know, it's not called date, it's called date survey. And the uh, data in it is not following the ISO standard, whereas the other ones are following the ISO standard. Similarly, there's this column for species, which has the scientific name in it, and that's available in three of the data sets. But then there are these other two that the scientific names are located as column headers at, in the data. And so this would take some work in order to get these data sets integrated together so I could start to extract the observations of the species I'm actually interested in and start to do the research that I want to do. This is where Darwin Core comes in. Darwin Core was originally conceived for, the, for museum collections and was, and the idea was to bring together the different museum collections and, and able to access them and, and do analyses across them because they're all following this standard. And it's been expanded since then to also talk about sampling event type of data. So if we think back to those data sets that I showed you at the beginning, you know, they're, they're all different, the column headers are different, and the data in them is not all following the same standard. When we align these data to Darwin Core, all of the column headers are the same. And then the data in them is following the standards that are recommended so that they can be integrated together into an integrated data resource. And then once that's done, then you can start to do this observation level extraction because you're really interested in a particular species that, this, that all of these surveys were had observations of that species in them. So, once we can extract those, then you can start to do these analyses of parrotfish over time and at broad spatial scales. To give you a sense of what this looks like in OBIS, this is a parrotfish species that I searched for in OBIS. And we can see that there are approximately 84,000 occurrence records for this species and about 10,000 absence records. And this is coming from 58 different data sets. So instead of having to go out to 58 different places to grab the data, or maybe in a couple of different repositories, but downloading 58 different data sets, instead, you can come here to OBIS, you can search for this scientific name, and you can get back just those observations of this species from those 58 data sets. So the Darwin Core, what it does for us is it makes it so that you can integrate these data together, and then do an extraction on that integrate, integrated data resource so that you can start to really dig into the question that you're interested in, which is about parrotfish. So this is coming from these you know, 58 different data sets, like I said. Um, here's the first 20 that are listed. So this is coming from, we have observations of this species coming from the Reef Visual Census surveys, and also the Atlantic and Gulf Rapid Reef Assessment, as well as a Puerto Rican Coral Reef Monitoring data set, which was just recently added. And when, so as a researcher, you go out and you do, you do this search and you're able to bring this back and download this integrated, this extraction 
which is an integration from these 58 da different data sets. And you can see that the information is all in the same, is located in, in all together in the same columns and, and formatted the same way so that you can, so you don't have to worry about doing that integration. It's already sort of done for you. And that's my brief primer into Darwin Core. I want to thank you for the opportunity to talk to you about it today. And uh, if you'd like to get in touch, here's my contact information. And I'm excited to talk more about data standards for biological data. Thank you.